It's not unusual when I'm on the campaign trail that I'm asked, what can we do about healthcare? Currently being a physician, providing uh, care to patients and having been a nurse and director of public health, both in academic medicine and in private practice, it's not an unusual question to ask. All of us know that the cost of healthcare is too great and it's far beyond the reach of many uh, families. So having healthcare that's affordable, that's accessible to everybody, but more importantly, gives you choice is an issue that's very important to me and that I can't wait to tackle when I get into Congress. We know that reforming the healthcare system in the United States is not gonna be a Medicare for all program because it doesn't give you choice. It's a government bureaucrat making decisions for you on the most intimate parts of your life. And that is your healthcare choices and those of your family or your friends or your neighbors. Medicare for all, unfortunately, may give access to people to care or to benefits, but if there's long waiting times, if it's out of reach, if you can't have access to a provider close to your community, in essence, you don't have any health care at all. And if you have to go through a government bureaucrat to make the decision on what you should have for your health care and what your health care options are, we know that those options are going to be limited and reduced. So health care for all, the solution is to allow the marketplace to help with health care. We know that price is an issue that helps people not overutilize health care. And then there's health and medical care. There's two issues at stake and looking at where healthcare is going in the future. If we don't get a handle on healthcare costs now, fraud and abuse in our healthcare systems, having a Medicare for all system will end up being no medical care for anyone. When you look at healthcare in general, and I know this intimately because I've been uh, directly affected by changes in the uh, federal government and how they impact healthcare. And it's one of the reasons I ran uh, for office because what happens in Washington DC affects me every day in being able to take care of my patients. We're now mandated to do electronic health records uh, after the Affordable Care Act went through. And the electronic health records, while they may allow transmission of information we don't necessarily always have the data that we need and it's very cumbersome and takes a lot of time. It's led to a lot of frustration in the provider community, whether you're a doctor, a nurse practitioner, or a physician's assistant, whether you're an emergency room provider. It's led to so much frustration within the healthcare community that we're spending more and more time on an electronic record with our back towards our patient and less and less face-to-face -face time also with the Affordable Care Act, we saw premiums increase dramatically. We saw drug prices grow up dramatically. We've seen consolidation of hospitals to larger hospital systems. And we've also seen consolidation of small independent physician practices into larger practices or consumed by hospital or healthcare systems. All of this has led to increased costs. So absolutely what happens at the federal government level affects me every single day and how I can deliver the best care, the highest quality care, the most accessible care possible to my patients. Because healthcare is an important issue to me, I had the opportunity as a state center to be able to directly impact people. We put forward uh, legislation that would end the preauthorization for people on Medicaid to get Chantex to stop smoking. As that legislation was going through, Medicaid director decided that we didn't need to pursue the legislation and he sent out a memorandum that it would no longer be required. We also made uh, better access to oral contraceptives for women so that uh, if they were already on oral, oral contraceptives, they wouldn't need to go to the pharmacy every month to get their oral contraceptive medication refilled. We also made access to uh, legal permanent residents having access to prenatal care. We know that this was an issue within our state and I was spoken to by many providers who were trying to address this issue because among this population of legal residents to the United States, there was higher uh, rates of premature infant birth and admission to the neonatal intensive care unit. Because Medicaid already pays for these deliveries and these births, this was something that was costing our state millions of dollars. To be able to have access to prenatal care for these legal permanent residents would allow us to have healthier babies, healthier moms, pro-legal immigration, pro-family, and ultimately save costs within our Medicaid system within our state. And I was proud to be able to sponsor that legislation. 
We also sponsored legislation on medicated assisted treatment. And this is medication that helps people that have substance use disorder get off drugs. And that process, when a person makes that commitment that they want to go into recovery, they shouldn't have to fight with a system and their provider who wants to get them access to medicated assisted treatment.